Say you're performing a penetration test, or you're just playing try hack me or hack the box, and you've got a new IP address, you've got a new target that you can go hack and beat up. What's the first thing you do? You probably run nmap, right? You try to look for uh, open ports, the external attack surface, and say you found HTTP or HTTPS, a web server is open, listening, and serving content. What's the first thing you do? You probably run Durbuster, or Durb, or GoBuster, or FeroxBuster, or anything where you can brute force and uncover and discover new web pages or URLs and address and location that you can go to. So let me tell you about this thing. Let me tell you about cyber deception. And it's the idea that the defense, blue teamers, defenders will set out mouse traps or honey pots or things to fool the attacker and ultimately waste their time so the defenders have more time to detect to respond to remediate and to get up into action in this video we're going to play with one of those tools that you might be able to use for cyber deception and just for your awareness, this is content from John Strand and the Black Hills Information Security and the Anti-Siphon Training and all of their awesome and incredible core tribe of companies and the great material that they put out there. Part of their pay what you can labs and activities and training and education is all part of things that you can find for free if you want it online. And John Strand even puts these out on his GitHub for the intro lab files and labs and activities. Take a look. This is their cyber deception and active defense course here. And if you want to drill down into it, you could honestly just go grab it. You can play with it, you can get it, because if you take a look in their training, they have a section for pay what you can training, where you can literally choose the price tag. If you, hey, want to throw in a hundred bucks, you want to throw in $50, you want the thing for free. That's totally okay. The whole point is to learn and get educated. Take a look. This is their active defense and cyber deception course. And if you wanted to, you could try to see if there's any live training up on the calendar. I haven't seen anything coming up super quick, but obviously they have a ton of incredible stuff and you should dive in. If you wanted to take a look in their on-demand training section, you could actually go see that their on-demand courses do include this active defense and cyber deception. You should totally go try it. We can see some of the awesome stuff that we are up to, especially within this lab and exercise. And there's so, so much good stuff to it because look, it's open to anyone. Like audience skill level, we want everyone. We just want to get folks trained. You should just bring a laptop and a smile. No prior knowledge needed. And John Strand and all of his crew is doing incredible stuff as always. So hey, shout out to them and let's go dive in to this lab and activity here. So I want to showcase Spider Trap. It is so cool and they do have a GitHub project linked here for the ADHD and some of the uh, active defense work here, active countermeasures and cyber deception. And the whole idea, the whole gimmick is that you trap web crawlers and spiders, you know, those utilities like a Go Buster or Ferox Buster or Dirt Buster and things that will just try to find and unravel the different web pages that might be accessible on a website. What it does is it traps them in an infinite set of dynamically generated web pages. Now we could go spin this up. We can play with it. It's a super simple and easy Python tool. I am inside of the Anti-Siphons Pay What You Can Intro Labs Virtual Machine, their ADHD box, and we can open up Windows Terminal, just fire up a command line, and if you wanted to, hey, it is a Python script, right? So let's open up with the drop-down menu inside of the Ubuntu and the Linux prompt. We could go see inside of our opt directory, let me cd forward slash opt ls to list stuff. We do, of course, have Spider Trap listed here. Now let me go ahead and change directory into Spider Trap. I'll full screen this and take a look. This is all that it is and all everything that you would find in the GitHub repository if you went to go play with it, spidertrap.py, maybe a directory word list. And honestly, it's super duper easy. Let's try and run Python spider trap. I'll use tack h to see what this thing needs. And honestly, it doesn't need anything. Like it, the file is optional. If we just go ahead and try to run spider trap, it just spins up a web server on port 8000. I'm sure you could customize this, or maybe you get some inspiration and want to write this yourself. Let's get back to our web browser and try to go to localhost 8000, and we can see this is it. This is the web page. It's super simple, it's super easy, but let's say an automated scanner, like one of those tools, would just try to go see, ooh, there's a new link on this web page. And it clicks on it and it travels to it and it crawls to that new location. And then there's a new link, and a new link, and a new link, and a new link, and it's all randomly, dynamically generated to just infinitely spin and waste their time. Now I know you might be saying, well, okay, cool, that's fine and dandy and all, but I would go manually investigate that. I would go see the web page and know that it's a trap. And I get that. But seriously, think about this idea. Think about like you could make this your own actual web page or maybe plenty of others or maybe just stands, hey, little honey pots that just for servers you got lying around. And maybe you just, I don't know, put your actual content on the page, but still add to the features and functionality that everything else would be a trap. Or maybe it's just like lorem ipsa. Maybe you just fill it with generated content and it looks real, but it's totally a facade. It's all a charade.
Like, let me just keep clicking. Let me just keep going down the rabbit hole of infinite links and I'll never reach the end because it is randomly generated every single time. Going back to the server logs, obviously you can see, hey, all of my requests over and over and over again. Let me try and stop this. And remember we have this directory list here that we could give spider trap. Like if I just wanted it to go ahead and include that directory list, then it will start to generate on the server those pages. Let me go back to localhost 8000 and like, look, maybe it just shows random components from that word list, or maybe you could use like, I don't know, there's regular sec lists that Daniel Meisler puts together and maybe you just all the common things like HT access, like admin, like PHP my admin could just fall away into an abyss. So here's the thing, say I went back to my command line and say I opened up another utility, maybe putting on my hacker hat, acting as the adversary, say that I am the threat actor here, say that I am the pen tester, the red teamer, say I'm you trying to do a hack the box or try hack me machine. And what I'll do is I'll use wget to try and mirror the web page. This again is gonna do a similar functionality of like trying to crawl different locations. And say I went to localhost on port 8000 and it's just gonna keep pulling down different files. It's gonna get stuck in this loop because every time it sees a new page, it's going to have new pages to explore and fall down and never get out of. Now, obviously this is going to help the defenders really see this thing in action, and then you have time. Then you have wasted the threat actor's time and maybe you just straight up pissed them off because hey, they start crying, they get their hacker tears going, right? And that will give you the opportunity to react and respond. That's the whole idea of cyber deception. This is just gonna keep going until either the server shuts down or we kill WGET, right? Let control C that. Now I know this is a super simple lab. Like literally, hey, just grab the IP address if you wanna try it from an R, like remote location from an external point of view. And then you could just see it in action, spinning up random links. And if you wanted to use the directory list or anything else in a different word list, you could totally do that. But and seriously try to W get stuff or run Ferox Buster, run Go Buster and watch it just go for a ride that it'll never get off. Uh, fun thing though, if you do have any interest, I think it is worthwhile to try to dig into how this spider trap code works. Now I'm sure you can imagine, like look, you could build this in Python. You could write this in Python Flask. Maybe you could just put this together and maybe even a little bit of better code in your opinion as to what they've done here. They don't use Flask, right? Hey, just they use the built-in Python libraries, but it generates a random page, fills it with random links, and this happens every single request, every single time. Now, if I may, I'd love to try and give this to you for inspiration. Like if you're one of those developers and engineers that wants to create something just like this, again, maybe mixing in those ideas that I mentioned of, hey, make it look realistic. Hey, make it actually something that's not just, oh, a dump of links and A anchor tags. I'm sure you could have a heyday with this, but I wanted to put it on your radar and I wanted to tell you about cyber deception because it is the coolest thing and man, there's so much to dive into. But hey, I gotta be honest, that's the show, guys. Like, look, if you wanted to check out some of the other awesome, incredible stuff that is showcased in the Active Defense and Cyber Deception course, Active Countermeasures that John Strand, Black Hills Information Security, Anti-Siphon Training is all about, it's pay what you can. Like, you can go just jump in, learn something new. It's on demand so you can get whatever material you want whenever you want it. Super grateful to be an anti-siphon training and Black Hills partner. And I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do those YouTube algorithm things, like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks so much.